Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. This time, um, we're going to be looking at bullying, but with a twist. Ooh, a twist. Yeah. So we have this article by Zylvia Ola okay. called, You Are Wrong About the Bullies. Interesting. And it kind of got me thinking, like, what if we have bullies all wrong? You know, that's a very provocative title for an article. Yeah. So what exactly makes you think we might have it wrong? Well... You know, we tend to see bullies as people who lack confidence yeah, or empathy, mm -hmm. but there's some new research that suggests that maybe they're actually overly confident. Oh, wow. And they are very, very aware okay. of the impact of their actions. Mm -hmm. They just don't care as much as we think they should. So it's almost like they're deliberately choosing this path. Yeah. So it kind of challenges that classic narrative right. that we have where... Bullying is a result of yeah. a lack of empathy or social skills or whatever it is. Right. Like some sort of deficit yeah. in their personality or upbringing or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. the article actually poses the question, what if bullies are actually the natural leaders? Whoa, hold on. But we've just misunderstood them. Mm. Okay, now that's a bold claim. It is. I'm intrigued, though. It is. I mean, when you look at it through the lens of evolutionary biology, mm. I mean, the article mentions this, but yeah. aggression has historically been a successful strategy, Yeah. you know, for survival. Right. Defending territory. Exactly. Competing for resources. Mm -hmm. Attracting mates. Yeah. All of those things often involve a certain amount of aggression. Exactly. And so if you look at bullying. Yeah. As a sort of modern manifestation of that. Right. It's not necessarily about being bad. Or mean mm -hmm. or a bad person right it's not like a moral failing yeah it's more about succeeding yeah but yeah by different rules in a different way yeah so then that leads to the question of like okay yeah instead of trying to teach bullies to stop their like innate behavior mm -hmm. are we going about this all wrong well that is what ola seems to be suggesting yeah what if instead of trying to punish them or suppress that behavior mm. we try to redirect it yeah. Funnel that aggression into more productive activities. So like harnessing that drive and ambition towards goals that benefit everybody, not just the bully. Exactly. And I really like that word that Ola uses, funneling. Yeah. Because it really emphasizes that we're not trying to eliminate this energy. Right. We're just redirecting it. Right. Think of it like a river. Mm. You can't stop the flow of the river. Right. But you can build dams and canals to control where it goes. Right. And how it's used. Yeah. So you're saying we need to like build dams and canals for bullies. In a manner of speaking. Okay. So I can see where she's going with this. But yeah. how do you actually do that? Yeah. How do you funnel someone's aggression? Yeah. Especially when it's manifesting as bullying. Right. But that's where I think the idea of voluntary control comes in. So Ola argues that the real key difference between a bully and a successful leader is their ability to manage and direct their aggression. So it's not about erasing those strong tendencies. Hey. It's about developing the self-awareness and the skills to use them effectively. So knowing when to push and when to hold back. Exactly. Recognizing the impact of your actions. Yeah. Choosing how to respond. Exactly. It's all about taking responsibility for those powerful drives uh -huh. and learning to use them constructively. Okay. So let's say we buy into this idea yeah. that some bullies have this leadership potential. Mm -hmm. How do we start to cultivate that? That voluntary control. Yeah. What does that look like in practice? Well, I think for starters, it requires a pretty big shift mm -hmm. in how we view and respond to these individuals. Okay. So instead of seeing them as problems to be solved, right. maybe we need to start seeing them as individuals with unique strengths. Okay. That can be incredibly valuable if they're properly channeled. So less about punishment and more about guidance. Exactly. Less about don't be a bully and more about Here's how to use your assertiveness mm -hmm. to achieve positive outcomes. Yeah. It's about recognizing that not everyone fits neatly into the same mold. Right. And that sometimes the most effective leaders yeah. are the ones who are willing to challenge the status quo, mm -hmm. push boundaries, right. make tough decisions, yeah. even if it ruffles some feathers along the way. And it makes me think of that Jordan Peterson quote yeah, yeah, that yeah. Ola includes in her article. Mm -hmm. A harmless man is not a good man. Yeah. A good man is a very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. I love that quote. It's pretty provocative. Yeah. But it's so true. Yeah. It really makes you think. It really highlights the fact that yeah. strength and assertiveness, even aggression, are not inherently bad qualities. Mm -hmm. It's how we use them exactly. that determines their impact. 
Okay, so we've got this intriguing idea yeah. that maybe bullies have the raw materials for leadership, mm -hmm. but they need help developing that voluntary control. All right. So what are some of the ways we can actually support that development? Well, one approach that Ola suggests is focusing on creating environments that allow for the healthy expression of these tendencies okay. rather than just trying to suppress them. So like instead of telling them to be quiet right. or sit down, exactly. we're giving them an outlet for that energy. Precisely. And this could involve things like, this could involve things like providing opportunities for leadership in controlled settings. Okay. You know, maybe mentorship programs mm. that focus on emotional intelligence and self-regulation right. or even something as simple as encouraging physical activity okay. as a way to channel that excess energy. So it's about finding constructive outlets for that drive yeah, rather than just telling them to calm down or be nice. Exactly. And it's not just about the individual either. Right. The environment plays a huge role. Ola argues that we need to think critically about the types of workplaces that might actually benefit from these individuals yeah. who have this strong drive for dominance. That's a really interesting point because not every work environment is the same, right? Right. Some might thrive on that competitive edge yeah. while others would completely crumble under it. Exactly. And that's one of the questions she brings up in the article. Oh, really? Yeah. She's like, should it be a small company or a large corporation, a nonprofit? Yeah. How would a so-called bully respond to different leadership styles above them? That makes me think of like the classic trope yeah. of the demanding but brilliant boss yes. who pushes everyone really hard yeah. but also gets amazing results. Right. And it really challenges us to rethink our assumptions mm -hmm. about what we consider toxic versus effective leadership. Yeah. Because what are some of those traits right. that we associate with bullying? Like assertiveness. Yeah. Risk taking. A willingness to challenge the status quo. Yeah. What if those are actually valuable assets? In certain contexts. Exactly. Okay, but how do we make sure that those traits are used for good? Right. And not just for personal gain? Yeah, that's the key question. At the expense of others. And I think that's where voluntary control comes back into play. Right. It's about helping these individuals understand the difference between using their strength to motivate and inspire versus using them to intimidate and manipulate. That's a fine line. It is a fine line. And I imagine it takes a lot of self-awareness. Yes, definitely. And conscious effort to stay on the right side of that line. Absolutely. But that's why it's so important to provide support and guidance. Mm -hmm. We can't just assume that people will figure it out on their own. Right. We need to give them the tools and the resources to develop that voluntary control yeah. and use their strengths in a way that benefits everyone. Ola also brings up the point that yeah. our perception of what constitutes bullying might be influenced by things like gender. Oh, absolutely. She gives the example that women who exhibit similar assertive traits right. are often labeled as bossy or aggressive, mm -hmm. while men might be praised for being strong leaders. Yeah, it's a classic double standard. It is. It really speaks to that broader issue yeah. of unconscious bias. Absolutely. Because what might be seen as assertive and decisive in a man right. could be perceived as abrasive and domineering in a woman. Exactly. So are we saying that we need to start judging behavior based on the individual, Yeah. not on societal expectations of how someone should act based on their gender? I think so. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. Yeah. We need to move away from those rigid stereotypes right. and recognize that leadership can come in many forms. It reminds me of a situation I observed a few years ago. Oh, yeah. There's this woman on a project team I was on. Okay. She was incredibly sharp and driven, mm. but she wasn't afraid to push back on ideas. Oh, wow. Or challenge the way things were being done. Okay. And some people saw her as difficult and bossy. Yeah. But honestly, she was just really good at her job. Mm. She had a vision. Okay. And she wasn't afraid to voice it. And did that ultimately lead to a positive outcome for the project? It did, yeah. Okay. She ended up pushing the team mm -hmm. to be more creative and innovative. Oh, wow. And the project was a huge success because of it. That's great. But it made me realize how easily those strong, assertive qualities in women yeah. can be misconstrued. It's a perfect example of how those same qualities that might get someone labeled a bully Yeah can actually be incredibly valuable yeah. when channeled effectively. It all comes down to context intent mm -hmm. and that all-important voluntary control. Exactly. Ola also brings in a really fascinating perspective from evolutionary biology. Oh, yeah? To suggest that bullying might be a vestige okay. of our primal instincts for survival and competition. 
That's interesting. It's a bit jarring to think about. Yeah. But it does raise some interesting questions. It does. And it's not to say that we're all just slaves to our genes. Right. But it's important to be aware of these underlying biological factors. Yeah. That might be influencing our behavior. So we're not excusing bullying. Right. But we're acknowledging that it might be rooted in something deeper than just being mean mm -hmm. or lacking empathy. Exactly. And if we can understand those roots, yeah. we might be better equipped to address the issue. In a more nuanced and effective way. Exactly. This leads to a rather provocative question. Okay. Are we as a society too quick to label and dismiss those mm. who exhibit bully-like behavior. I see where you're going with this. Are we missing out on potential? Yeah. By not recognizing that those same qualities, when harnessed correctly, right. can actually drive positive change. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And I don't think there's an easy answer. No. But I do think it's a conversation worth having. Absolutely. And it brings us back to this idea yeah. of voluntary control. If we can teach individuals to understand and manage those strong drives, right. those bullyish tendencies, Yeah. perhaps we can unlock a whole new level of leadership potential. And not just for the individuals themselves, right. but for the organizations and communities they're a part of. Yeah. Imagine what we could achieve mm. if we could harness that energy for good. It's definitely a thought-provoking concept. It is. Makes me wonder if we're too focused on trying to fit everyone into the same mold yeah. of what we consider acceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. And in the process, we're actually stifling some incredible potential. It's like trying to train a wolf to be a sheepdog. Ooh, I like that. You might get some level of compliance, right? but you'll never fully tap into the wolf's natural strengths and instincts. Maybe we need to rethink our whole approach to leadership development. Yeah. Instead of trying to smooth out all the rough edges mm. and create these perfectly polished, agreeable leaders, right? maybe we need to embrace a bit more diversity of style and approach. I think that's a fantastic point. Yeah. And it ties into what Ola suggests about creating environments that allow for a wider range of expression. Mm -hmm. Maybe the key isn't to eliminate those strong assertive qualities, yeah. but to help individuals develop the self-awareness and the skills to use them effectively. So less about don't be a bully. Right. And more about here's how to be a leader. Exactly. Even if you have a bit of a bully streak. It's about recognizing that leadership isn't a one-size-fits-all concept. Right. There are many paths to success. Mm. And sometimes the most effective leaders are the ones who are willing to challenge the status quo, push boundaries, make tough decisions. It's about understanding the difference between using those qualities for personal gain mm -hmm. at the expense of others yeah. versus using them to drive positive change, to make tough decisions, to push boundaries in a way that benefits the whole. And that brings us back to that crucial element. Voluntary control. Voluntary control. It's the key. It's the key that unlocks the potential for those who might otherwise be labeled as bullies. Yeah. To become truly effective and impactful leaders. So how do we as individuals and as a society yeah. start to cultivate this voluntary control? That's a great question. Yeah. And one that we'll delve into further. Oh. As we continue this deep dive. Okay, so we spent a good amount of time talking about voluntary control, but like, how do we actually cultivate it? Yeah, it's kind of a big abstract concept. It is. So like, what are the steps? Well, I think it can be broken down yeah. into smaller, more manageable steps. Okay. And Ola's article kind of touches on a few key areas. Okay, give me the concrete examples. Well, one is self-awareness. Okay. So before you can control your behavior, you need to understand what triggers those impulses. Those like aggressive impulses. Exactly, the strong, potentially yeah. aggressive impulses. So like taking a step back and being like, okay, right. what situations set me off? Yeah. What people set me off? What are your triggers? Yeah, and what- Exactly, and once you've identified those triggers, yeah. you can start developing coping mechanisms. Okay. Right, so maybe it's taking a few deep breaths mm -hmm. before you respond to a stressful email. Okay. Or removing yourself from a heated conversation right. before yeah. things escalate. So it's like having those tools uh, to yeah. manage those intense emotions yeah. before they lead to you know, right. destructive behavior. Exactly, and the more you practice using those tools, yeah the better you'll become at regulating your responses. Okay, that makes sense for individuals, mm -hmm. but what about for organizations? Yeah. How can companies help cultivate this 
in their employees. Well, I think Ola suggests that organizations can play a huge role yeah. by creating environments that support healthy expression of these traits. So it's not just about the individual. It's also mm -hmm. about the systems and structures in place. Exactly. It's about changing the environment. Okay. So this could involve things like yeah. providing clear expectations for behavior, mm. offering training on conflict resolution, okay. emotional intelligence, right. and even creating opportunities for employees to channel their energy into positive outlets. So instead of telling people to be quiet and sit down, right. you're giving them something to do. Exactly. Give them an outlet for that energy. Okay. Like maybe competitive sports leagues or volunteer projects. So we can't just expect people to figure it out on their own. Right. We need to provide the structure and support yeah. to help them develop those skills. It makes me wonder, you know, yeah. if part of the problem is that we as a society are so quick to judge. Oh, absolutely. We mm -hmm. see someone acting aggressively. Right. And we automatically think, oh, they're a bully. Yeah, we slap on that label. And they have bad intentions. Without really understanding the context. Yeah, like what if instead of doing that, right. we took a step back and said, mm -hmm. what's going on here? Yeah. What's driving this behavior? Is there something we can do to help yeah. redirect that energy? That's a much more constructive approach. It is. It is. And it ties back to this idea that we need to broaden yeah. our definition of good leadership. Because it's not always about being agreeable right. and compassionate. Exactly. Sometimes it's about having the strength and the willingness to make those tough decisions. To push those boundaries. Yeah, to challenge the status quo. And those qualities can be so valuable. They can. If they're wielded responsibly. Exactly. And that's where voluntary control comes in. Right. It's the that key. It unlocks the potential. For people who might otherwise be labeled as bullies. Right. To become truly effective leaders. So it sounds like we're suggesting a pretty big shift in perspective. I think we are. Maybe instead of trying to eradicate bullying altogether, mm -hmm. we should be focusing on helping people develop those skills yeah. and the self-awareness to manage those tendencies. Exactly. And creating environments that support that development, right? both on an individual and organizational level. It's a challenge. It is. But it's an incredible opportunity. It is. To unlock some serious potential. Absolutely. Well, this has been such a thought-provoking conversation. It has. It's really made me rethink a lot of my assumptions about bullying and leadership and, you know, yeah. human nature in general. It's all connected. So as always, thank you for joining us for another deep dive. It's been a pleasure. And remember, knowledge is most valuable mm. when it's understood and applied. Absolutely. So take what you've learned today. Yeah. See how it resonates with your own experiences. Think about it. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.